So if you're ever in a situation where you're struggling to come up with new ideas or you're stuck on a particular track that needs something else but you can't quite think of what to add, then this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to be talking about various ways you can jazz up your tracks using generative music techniques. So these are methods that you can use on the melody, on the drums, on, on really any element of the track to give it more variation, to give it a more evolving feel and to almost automate your tracks so that it's generating sounds for you. So there's some really useful techniques in this video and to demonstrate this, I'm going to use this track that I'm playing right now. Plus a special shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. They've got some exciting new content that's going to be really useful to any music producers, beginner to advanced. That I'm going to talk about a little bit later in this video. They've kindly agreed to give everyone who clicks the link in the description down below a free month of Skillshare. Plus for everyone who signs up to the free month trial, I'm going to give away $15 worth of credits to my sample pack store. That you can spend on sample packs or merch. More information about that a little bit later in the video. But for now, I'm going to go in and break down some of these generative methods. So to start things off, I threw on a little atmosphere on there. If you've got something like a long ambient sample that varies throughout the track, that's always going to be great for a little bit of sort of random variance as well. Um, but really when I started this track, my thought process was to start with a sort of something to ground it. Uh, and by that I mean you can have a lot of random generative sounds creating really interesting ambient soundscapes. But for things like lo-fi electronica, um, anything that's less on the ambient side, you need to still sort of have that musical structure that grounds the track. So to do that, I started off with this sort of piano root note thing. So I've got two VSTs on there stacked on top of each other. The first is Leco, which is playing the half speed sustains. So it's effectively a sampled piano uh, and all the samples have been stretched to half speed, which gives it a really interesting sort of gritty sound. And I've layered that with an Oliver Patrice uh, felt piano, double felt piano, which has got some delay on there. Cut the lows so it doesn't clash too much with the Leco. And that's my sort of very simple uh, sort of C minor route to the track. And then on top of that, I'll start with this art stuff. So I've got a little section dedicated to all these randomized ARP sounds. So starting off with this one. So I've taken the samples from uh, organic Lifer Hip Hop Volume 1 sample pack. So I've added it on your track and everything is sort of, again, anchored to the root. So if it fits the root of the track, it's fine. Often, if you've got a lot going on, it can be hard to sort of add new melodic elements. So usually what I'm doing, even when I've got a lot of stuff added to the track, I'm going to solo the piano, solo the new track that I want to add. And for this case, I just took some of these samples, dropped them on there. So it doesn't sound right it down now it fits and then I think I added th three or four so I did that and then if you freeze it flatten it make sure it's all consolidated. If you freeze and flatten, that's only really if you've added effects, which I did, I added a little bit of reverb and stuff to the sample. Freeze, flatten it, and then you can insert a simpler, throw it in there, you'll load up the simpler interface there. And then from there, I started to add the arpeggiator and add some effects. So the first one was this one. So we've got here a chord that is just playing all the notes that trigger all the individual elements to this sample. Each of these slices is triggered by a note. And I've got an arpeggio here which randomly plays individual notes. So then we get the randomness. Uh, so you go in the groove, keep it straight on this one. Style, I've gone for random. Uh, there's different methods. If you want it to be more consistent, you can have random other, or you can have converge, diverge, etc. Uh, I've gone for one four rate, which changes how fast it plays the notes. And I've gone for I've increased the gate just to allow the sample to play out a little bit more. Uh, and that's pretty much it. You can also change the distance if you want to make sure it covers the full range of the sample. Um, but yeah, that is effectively all that went into the initial section of this. And you can see it plays different snippets. I changed the slice by to beat. You can have it on transient or you can manually pick exactly what slices you want from your sound. Uh, I've thrown a compressor on there. Just so some of the quiet bits uh, aren't too exaggerated from the louder bits. 
Uh, I've got a portal, which is giving it a sort of granular synthesis. I've got the tremolo shimmer. Valhalla shimmer reverb. Cutting some of the highs so it's not too bright. And again, cutting some of the lows so it's not too muddy. I've got that that plays randomly throughout the track. Now I've done the same thing here, but this time I've used a sample from Arcade. So I've got all these slices here and then occasionally it will play this sort of fuller sample which you heard just a second ago. Again I've got the same settings there and effectively the same effects as well. So you can mess about with the panning as well if you want to and um, add some additional effects but that's effectively all I've gone for for the vocals. Next up again a similar method but this time for guitar. Uh, so I recorded some notes from the pentatonic scale, I think it was C minor for the track. I've got an arpeggiator which is a little bit faster at 1 over 8 for the rate. Um, again I don't know if I mentioned it but you've got to throw it into simpler, make sure it's on slice mode. Uh, you can add your own filters there if you want to, LFOs etc. Um, and you can also repitch it if you want to do the same thing, you can do it pitched up an octave. Could sound pretty cool with the guitar. Or again obviously down an octave or even more if you wanted to. Again, compressor, portal, uh, with the tremolo shimmer and the same effects for this. These are all pretty similar in terms of the method used. I just use different sounds to do it and you can do whatever you want. You can have piano, vocal samples. Uh, you can use similar stuff for the drums we'll talk about in a minute. But yeah, that was the sort of arpeggio bit. And then I've also got this last one, which is using the Alpha Arnold Stratus, which is effectively um, a similar idea to the arpeggiator, uh, but this patch is designed to play sort of random um, swarm of notes. But you can do the same thing if you've not got the Alpha Arnolds with arpeggiators um, and a couple of different methods, which I'll go into in a second. So that was a sort of main ARP bus, which is fades in in the demo. This stuff works nice to sort of build tension towards drops as well. So quickly before I carry on this breakdown, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about this week's sponsor, who is Skillshare. So for those of you who have never heard of Skillshare, it is a well-designed platform full of effectively tutorials, lessons, instructive videos on a range of topics to help you with your personal growth and development into 2023. So whether it's looking to improve on your hobbies, on your side hustles, on your general personal development, and life management skills. There is content for everyone on Skillshare and there's some really amazing courses that have been a huge help to me over the past 12 months. Many of my favorite creators, musicians, videographers, and everything in between are on the platform with various courses and there's always new content that's been added to it. It's all ad free, it's well structured. And the platform also has subtitles for Spanish, French, German, and Portuguese for any of my non-native speaking viewers. And this is what it looks like. So as soon as you join or even join for the first three months, you get access to complete everything that's available on the site. This is a typical sort of course page that you might see. This one is the Jacob Collier course. So this course in particular really covers the sort of the roots of your musical interests and how you can convert that into music creation. And it's a great course. I would highly recommend it. I'm still working my way through it, enjoying it massively. But there's so many other courses on here that have covered videography, music production. There's also lo-fi related tutorials on there. As you can see, each course you can read the reviews. This one has only recently dropped, but the reviews are already really great. And I can see why. You can go and look at the discussions where people talk about different elements of the course and any resources can be found here as well. Often there's PDFs and stuff you can print off with for music. It could be guitar tab or music notation, whatever it might be. So yeah, really amazing platform. Would highly recommend checking it out. And if you want to check it out, you can click the link in the description down below and the first thousand people to click it will get a free month access to Skillshare. So you can try it out, see if you like it. If not, you can cancel it without paying a penny and you get a month of really amazing content to watch in the meantime. And as I said in the introduction, for everyone who clicks the link and signs up for a free month of content on Skillshare, I'll send you over $15 worth of credits to my store. All you've got to do to enter is send me a link to your profile once you've signed up. So if you go over here, go on view profile, you can just copy this link and send it over to wonderloops at gmail.com and I'll send you over $15 worth of credits. Yeah, onto the rest of the breakdown. 
Next up, I've got some uh, pad sounds to add a little bit of texture. So for this, I've got the pads that I often use, the vocal pads from Spitfire Audio's sort of cheaper range. So I've got the Speculative Memories closed mouth vocal pad, which is just, is, is what it says in its turn, it's just a soft vocal pad. I've increased the attack, added a bit of release, and I'm just playing the sort of root notes of the track. Um, and then I've also got the Oliver Patrice Pool Project, which again is playing more vocal pads. So on their own, they're just sort of soft vocal pads. But what I've done here is I've got a send to a granular synth engine. So you can see they're both dry. But you can hear these sort of shimmering of sound that's laying on top of them. And that is from this send. It's the EFX Fragments by Autoria. Uh, so I'm using the Fragmental Patch, which is obviously taking the samples I'm sending to it, chopping them up, pitching them. I've got this pan thing, which is moving them around the sort of three-dimensional space as well. So yeah, this one's a bit similar to Portal, but they've both got different uses. This one's a little bit more Fragmental, and I really like using this for this sort of chopping and pitching sound. Um, and it's great, the sort of pan and the effects options that you can use in it as well. So yeah, that's my send. I've got a couple of other things going to that, which I'll talk about in a sec. Next up, as I mentioned, I got the vocal samples from uh, Organic Lo-Fi Volume 1. And I threw them in an arpeggiator, but I'm also playing them on this with a couple of effects as well. So dry is just straight up vocal samples from the pack. Uh, and what I've got is I've got Portal on there with a rather choppy effect called 16 note shape pan um, but to give it a little bit of variation first off i'm cutting off the lows so i don't want it to be too chaotic when you've got so many things going on you need to make sure that you're managing them in this sort of stereo eq space uh, auto filter cutting off the top end i've got the comeback kid which is adding a few effects if you have this it's from baby audio i'll drop links to everything plugin wise in the description down below so yeah the delay is off on this i'm just using the effects and then of course for the variation i've got a lfo on there so an lfo is uh, linked to the dry wet of the effect i've set the mode to random so you can see here these are random amounts that's changed in the uh, dry wet signal by you can adjust exactly how drastic you want it to be obviously dry to wet i've got zero to 100 as the option so i can make it 25 to 100 50 to 100 or if I want it to be really subtle, I can make it zero to like 20, whatever. A uh, really nice way to add a little bit of variation. You can map it to anything you want. It can be mapped to EQs, filters, delays, etc. Uh, but yeah, great way to add a little bit of randomness. You can also change the profile to be a sine wave if you want it to be more predictable as the track progresses uh, or, you know, any of these triangle square, etc. Next up, I've got a sort of synth engine. So for this, I've got operator uh, with these sort of settings, giving it just a sine wave, soft sound. I've got an LFO and a filter on there. Uh, next, I've got micro shift using the fat wide pads preset. Decapitator on there, giving it a bit of saturation. Um, auto filter, cutting the lows. I've got them doing the same on the actual um, synth itself but I just wanted to cut off a little bit more that gets added in through the distortion and the micro shift I've then got an auto pan with a very chaotic random sort of panning which is why if you've got headphones on you'll be able to hear it traveling around the stereo space I've got the particle reverb 6.1 on there which is giving it a sort of lush ambient reverb sound then of course we're playing random notes I've got the arpeggiator on there with these settings 1 of 16 uh, on a random other mode so the chords are sort of just following the bass line. I did have uh, a little thing called chords here, so I made sure to just play over the chords with the piano just to make sure they sounded nice against the root. So yeah, I made sure I had the chords right that way first, and then I could throw them into this operator. And then lastly, in the melodic bit, I had uh, this probability section. So this uh, is quite an interesting way that's built into Ableton to get a little bit of variation so what i did was i played a little piano melody on the ultra arnold's composer toolkit a bit spaced out on there to give it the lush reverb or to fill out to cut some lows 
And the variance comes in because if you click on the MIDI, you click down here, you get to see you've got the velocity here. But you've also got the probability, or the chance. So usually by default, as you'd imagine, it'd be set to 100%. So every time a MIDI note plays, it's a 100% chance that it's going to play out loud. But if you adjust the chance, you can change the likelihood of it actually playing. So you can see here, I've got these three notes. There we go. The first one didn't play that time because there's a, I don't know, 68% chance, 70% chance to play at any given time. So every time I play through this, there's going to be certain notes that just don't play. And that's going to vary every time I play it back. So in writing that, I just made sure that the sort of progression was a little bit busy anyway. So there's quite a lot of notes that are being played. So there's quite a lot of notes. There's not really a break in this. So that way when you have these randomness uh, and some of the notes dropping out, you just feel it a bit better and you can get some interesting sort of patterns. But if you've got a very min minimalistic, if you've got a very minimalistic sort of melody, if you start to take out some notes, it can sound a bit weird. So have a mess with it, have a mess with the probability. You can obviously make it really low probability, so it's mostly quiet. And then maybe add some delay and effects so you really feel when a note pops. And if I throw it all together in context, this is the sort of melody bus. I think I like about this is you can get some really impactful uh, drops if you just completely cut out loads of the sounds. So next up, uh, well the bass was just a very simple bass in this, there's nothing random going on there. Just uh, an atmosphere. Uh, actually I think it was a trillion. Uh, fretless trilogy, slow wide, and then I threw a mono on there because it was uh, not mono. A little bit of a compressor on there to the kick. But yeah, nothing crazy going on there. Uh, again, kick, nothing crazy going on either, just a simple kick. Using an ML Lo-Fi Kick 1 from Organic Lo-Fi Hip Hop Volume 1. And then there's a little bit more randomness and generative stuff in the drums. So for the drums, um, some of it is not random. So I've got just a little addictive drums hi-hat. That was from the Soul Kit. I've also got a cymbal that plays from addictive drums. Uh, also not random. A little brush sample, also not random. And then I've got this thing, which is just some symbols with a brush, which is going through portal. Um, so that gives it quite a nice sort of granular, interesting delay feel, a little texture in the background. But then what I've done is uh, with this, I wanted to add a little bit of randomness to the drums. So I've done that with an arpeggiator and some forward triggering. Um, but when you're doing randomness, there's some things that you don't want to be random. So the kick and the snare, I didn't want to miss out any of the snares or the kicks. So I made sure that that was penciled in as usual. Uh, and I made sure there's space for random textures to add on. So the snare is just a sort of crunchy, slightly muffled snare. I mean, I can add randomness. to this. You can add a velocity, um, random velocity to there or something just to give it a little bit more movement. And then I've got this. So I'm playing, as I did before, each individual sample in the drum rack. But because I've got an arpeggiator on there, it's going to randomly pick one and it's going to play it. And each of them have got a little delay on there to make it a little bit more impactful. Um, and then I've got a random velocity on there, so it's going to change exactly how sort of hard or soft it's played every time, slightly. And then on top of that, I've got an LFO that's attached to the... Um, filter frequency, so it's the frequency that's been delayed, it's going to change. And you can see I've also got one attached to the pan, so it changes what ear the delay is going to happen in. That's jumping from 0 to 100, so jumping from fully left, jump fully right, or anywhere in between. And then this one obviously is the filter one that's attached to the filter frequency, which again just keeps it moving. A bit of um, filtering on there, and a bit of reverb. And then I've also got this Foley trigger, which is doing a similar thing. So I've taken the Foley loops from the Organic Lo-Fi Volume 1, which sound a bit like this. Just some nice dark textures in there. Sliced it up um, by Transient. 
on that one and I think this one was by beat um, and then again I'm triggering random sections of this sample rather than different drum note racks this is random sections of the sample and then on the bus there I've got a crystallizer which is a sort of another granular synth delay type thing with a dual 23 echoes preset spaced out for some reverb and then altogether you get quite a nice variation So yeah, that pretty much sums it for the demo. We'd love to know if you've tried any of these yourself. If you've got any tracks that are live on Spotify that I can listen to where you've tried them, it'd be great to check them out. Do drop your links in the description down below. But yeah, for now, catch you next time. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in a bit.